Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to welcome to Drisha. Uh, we're excited to have you all this evening um, and to be uh, partnering once again with our friends at, at Bene Gesture and at BJ. Um, we, uh, in a few moments, I'm just going to introduce Rabbi David Silber, who is the, the dean and founder of Drisha, uh, to introduce what we're doing tonight. But basically, um, in a few weeks, when at the holiday of Passover, we will be reciting um, the book uh, Song of Song, Shira Shirim. Um, it's one of the, to my mind, one of the most uh, mysterious and beautiful books of our tradition. Um, and many have found it to be so over, over time. And we wanted to just come together tonight and simply learn more about it and really celebrate it. Um, and we'll be doing that um, musically along with our, uh, we have here Rabbi Roland Madelon from, from BJ, um, uh, Dan Nadell uh, on, on guitar, and uh, Tali Rubenstein, uh, on, who we're so honored to have here. And, but well, we really hope that um, you'll all see this as an opportunity to sing together and learn together. So our musicians and our uh, leaders here are facilitating a, a group experience of, uh, of, of learning Torah and, uh, and of prayer. Um, so um, without further ado, I will ask you to please silence or turn off your cell phones um, going forward. Um, and uh, Rabbi David Silver. Well, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, and, uh, and an opportunity to, you know, to collaborate with uh, the BJ Rabbi Madelon Roly, as he's known, and um, really to prepare ourselves for Pesach. The custom is to read Shir Hashirim on Pesach, and just to let us be very briefly that as a uh, growing up, I grew up in the Jackson Heights, Queens. The community of, uh, of basically mostly of, of survivors, and in, in retrospect, was that too many years after the war? Um, and the rabbi of Jackson Heights was a young rabbi, Rabbi Yaakov. In retrospect, very young man actually, out of the world of the yeshiva, and he loved to he loved to pray, he loved to daven, he loved to sing, and he introduced into our prayers uh, some of the uh, piyutim. That at least in, at those times, some of the Ashkenazic synagogues would recite beauty. And I remember specifically that on the holiday of Pesach, just at the end of the blessing prior to the Amidah, blessing which ends with Gal Yisrael, that on Pesach he would insert, that we would recite poems. And it would recite the first day, the second day of Pesach, and Shabbat and And they began with, the, they all were began the same way, Rafto di, flee my beloved. Rafto di is the last verse of Shir Hashirim. And the idea of Rafto di is very much connected to the idea of Shir Hashirim. Remember my wife Devar was saying to me many years ago that the way she understood Shir Hashirim and the custom to read it on Pesach is this. Shir Hashirim is a story of two, of two lovers. And they seem to be constantly missing each other or missing opportunities. The last verse of Shir Hashirim, Rachdo di, flee, flee my beloved. And our understanding of that is that sometimes you meet somebody and that person is really right for you, but the time is not right. It's too soon, it's not the right time. Shir Hashirim is read on Passover, it's the beginning of the year, it's the first month, Rosh Chodoshim, and it's about our relationship with, uh, with, the, with the divine. And our Shir Hashim, what we're saying is, we know that it's right, but it, may, but it may have to wait. Flee my beloved and come back at a time when, it, when it's right for both of us, when the time is right. And if you look at Brach D, I don't have it in front of me, if you look at it, you will see that's the theme of Brach D. Brach D and Mekom Mikdash We ask God not to run away from us, but to, but to give us time, give both of us time, all of us time, for the right moment, when it really will be right, when we can dwell together fully with, with all that is sacred. So that's my understanding of the poem of Brach Dodi, and uh, its place in, in, in Gaal Yisrael. And actually, if we think about it, we say this all the time. Su Yisrael, Kuma Bi Ezrat Yisrael. The end of the blessing of redemption, we ask God to rise up, Uftekin Umecha. It talks about a time in the future when God will redeem us Gal Yisrael looks forward to a time when we, we are ready to be fully redeemed. Now we just add one last point, and that is if we have time at the end, perhaps we'll sing a very simple song 
that is recited on the seventh day of Pesach by Yehuda Avi. We sang it in the in the in the service. It's recited often at uh, at, uh, at at circumcisions at, at Brit Milah for other reasons. And Yom Yabasha Shikhub Yulim Shira Chadasha Yom Yabasha Nebchub Mitzulim Shira Chadasha Shikhub Yulim. It talks about a new song that we were redeemed at the sea. We sang a Shira Chadasha. If we have time at the end, and much of the language is drawn from 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 Shira Shirim. So if we have time at the end, we'll see. Maybe I will teach a little very simple tune. I don't have a translation, but a very simple tune. But very much looking forward to learning together with, with Rowley. And Rowley has an enormous amount of knowledge about Piyut, and we're so grateful that he's sharing it with us uh, this evening. So without further ado, let's begin our program. Wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> David and his <Fisno. laughs> <laughs> We're very uh, glad to be here. Uh, Trisha is very much of a, a feeling of a second home for us. We've done over the years a number of things together. And uh, David and uh, Devorah come often to BJ. We are often here. So it's the, 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 wonderful, the wonderful blessing of being part of this community on the Upper West Side. We come in and out of each other's homes and we're part of the same larger family of Jewish community and able to explore things together each brings their uh, their expertise and their angle and so we're very happy to be here doing this tonight and so I want to take us David started with the end of the book of Shira Shirim we're going to start from the beginning with chapter one and this is the falling in love really this is the this is the praising of the of the beloved this is the falling in love. This is the, the emphasizing and bringing out of the beautiful qualities of the beloved before the, the, this encounter begins, be, before there is this quest for each other, before there is the running into the streets looking for the beloved who was, who was vanished. And um, uh, so this is the time of Pesach. I think it's the time of falling in love, the time of the beginning of the relationship, the time of the feeling of the Chesed. Pesach is the celebration of Chesed, of the of, of the love of God for the for the for our people, and uh, we say Pesach is the time of Dodi Li Vani Lo. That is the time of Dodi Li because this Dodi Li is my beloved is for me, Vani Lo, and I'm for him or for for the beloved. Dodi Li means that God initiates. The beloved is for me in. God initiates the rescue, the redemption from its time. When we come to the month of Elul, it's Anile Dodi Vidodili, because we are the ones who initiate the aspect of Tshuva, the aspect of return, it's on us. But the redemption from its time is an act of love on God's part. And this is where we begin to connect uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, lovers, God and our people. So we'll begin with uh, singing of um, the first chapter of Shira Shirim. And many of us are familiar with uh, Ashkenazic melody, which is actually a very beautiful tune, melody for Shira Shirim. I don't know it that well, but I know that people here who know it, <laughs> like Jenny and others, and Jenny often sings it. Would you like to sing it? So do I put you on the spot? Uh, uh, um. Okay, wonderful. And then I'll, I'll show you, there, there are different traditions. There's the main Ashkenazic tradition, where Jenny will, will demonstrate for us. Uh, Moroccan Jews sing it a different way, and uh, Syrian and Iraqi Jews uh, sing it in the, what is called Sefarad Yerushalayim, or the Yerushalmi tune, and I will de demonstrate that for you, but we'll begin with something that is more familiar to our ears. Shira Shirim Asher Lishlomo Isha Kedi Begmini Shikohotihu Kitovim Dodecha Meyayin Lereach Shemanecha Tovim Shemen Turak Shemecha Alkein Alamot Aibucha Mashcheni Acharech Narutza 
Eliani Hamelech Hadarab Nagila Venis Mehapa Naskira do Gehabiyain Meshari Maeduha. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's the, the beautiful thing in Shakur. So this is how they sing it in the Yushalmi tradition. This is or the, the, the Syrian tradition, it goes like this. The beautiful thing is that uh, in the Sephardic uh, communities, the traditional Sephardic communities, the Chira Shirim is sung every Friday night before Kabbalah Shabbat, between Mincha and Kabbalah Shabbat, the entire book is chanted. Now for families who bring their children, and most families actually, traditional families, bring their children, their little kids, to, to the Tfilah, to Ferev Shabbat. And so the little kids hear this from a very young age, and they internalize it. They learn it by heart. Everybody sings together. It's not just the Chazan who sings, but the whole community sings together, including the little children. So you can see children who are six or seven years old who have memorized practically the entire book. And they sing in a, Sephardic Jews sing loudly, they are not ashamed. And they sing, everybody sings, part of the culture. It's not just left to the professional singers. And so you see sometimes little kids who have memorized the entire book and they just, uh, it's, a, it's really a joy. They don't look into a book, they they're not reading it, they just know it. And it's, it's something that they carry with them this book, of all books, this is the book that they know by heart, which in our tradition of Akiva says, if all the books of the Tanakh, of the Bible, are holy, this is Kodesh Kodashim, this is the holiest, the holy of holies. And it's amazing that everybody who grew up with this has internalized it and carries it and knows it. Wherever they go, it goes with them. Which has a lot to say about 
you know, which one of the books we carry or people carry with them is this, the book of love, the book of searching, the book of, of trying to, 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 to uh, the yearning, the longing, the quest, the searching for God, the finding and losing again, which is actually all of our spiritual lives are actually uh, in, that, uh, in that movement, in that dynamic. So we're going to, to uh, teach you a number of pure team. I don't know that we will be able to, to go through all of them. Uh, maybe we'll teach you a couple of them, maybe we'll see a couple of them and you'll, you'll follow. But all of these pure team uh, are pure team that are based on the, uh, the, the theme or the motif or some motif of Shira Shiri. So we'll, uh, we'll sing it, we'll, we'll teach it, we'll, you'll read the translations if you don't know Hebrew and try to see what aspect of Shira Shirim this is bringing in here. Which, which poem brings what aspect of Shira Shirim? And, uh, uh, and, and, and what's the message that Shira Shirim brings to this pure team? Okay? Now, the pure team that we bring here span almost a thousand years, beginning with Rabbi Shlomo Ben Gabirol from the 11th century in Spain, the greatest, I think, one of the greatest uh, poem, poets of, uh, of the Hebrew language who lived a thousand years ago. All the way up to the 20th century, we have a, uh, a song of Israel of uh, the days, or the decades after the recreation of the State of Israel, and how also it has integrated themes of Shira Shiri. It's permanent in Hebrew poetry. And particularly when our people goes back to Eretz Israel, the themes of the land and love and renewal and the spring, and not just the spring outside, but the spring inside, the feeling of spring, of renewal, of possibility, of hope, of opportunity, of rebirth, are uh, reflected in a lot of the poems of, uh, of Eretz Israel. So you, we have a whole span. We begin with Shara Shem Mizgar. I think John wants to give us a few words of introduction to this beautiful poem, Shara Shem Mizgar, Shalabri Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gabiro. Thank you. Um, I'll just stay seated. Um, on page three, Shara Shem Mizgar, Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gabriel, Spain, 11th century. Take a look at it. Shara Shem Mizgar, the gate long shut, get up and throw it wide. The stag long fled, send him to my side. This, this whole piyu is, is dripping actually with uh, the language and imagery and the pathos of Song of Songs, of Shira Shirim. Um, and here I just wanted to highlight two features which kind of spoke to me as I was preparing for this evening. Um, Sha'ar Asher Nisgar, the gate long shut, kuma pitachehu, arise, get up and throw it, and throw it wide, arise and throw it wide. Where in, uh, I ask you, where from Song of Songs, do you know? Where, where is uh, Ibn Gabriel drawing from in this moment? Yeah, what your, what's your name, sir? Maybe, so I think, I think what's happening here is in uh, chapter 5 of Shira Shirim, Ani Yishena Vili Be'er, which is also a beautiful song, Ani Yishena Vili Be'er, I am asleep, my heart, my, yet my heart is wakeful. And we hear the beloved knocking on the door, saying, Pitchili, open for me, open the door, open the door, says the lover, Achoti, my beloved one. Um, and as Rabbi Silber was saying earlier, as Rabbi Madelon was just saying now, there's the tragedy there of um, the door um, being locked. I hear the lover can't get in, and by the time um, she gets up to greet him, uh, to greet her beloved, it's too late. Um, he's already barach dodi, right? Barach, barach dodi, he's already bled. Um, so here, the kuwa pitacheyu is referencing that, and, um, but this time it's us speaking, and we're saying, please open those doors that are locked. And as we come towards Passover, we need to have doors open. Please open those doors that are locked. It's a quest um, to be led inside. And one more, um, this continues in the third stanza, Mazed de Mutodech Kalayatha which they translate here, How shall I know his face, O lovely bride? She wants him. How will I know who he is, the lover who you are asking me to send? 
And the notion of questioning is very central in my reading of Shira Shiram, at least. The notion that we're questioning, questing for the beloved, searching after the beloved. It's core to what we do here, also in our Beit Midrash, in terms of learning Torah every day. Um, and it's two of the love song here, um, the questing after. Um, and those features come together beautifully uh, in this beaut. This is a melody from uh, Morocco. It's actually a Moroccan melody. It's a popular Moroccan melody, very well known in Morocco. That the Jews uh, appropriate it and uh, use it with different uh, beauty or prayers. In this particular case, with this song. Okay? So we'll demonstrate it for you and then we'll teach it to you. It's a very simple melody. Shabbat <laughs> Okay, it's very simple melody. So let's teach it to you. Shal Asher Nizgar. Kuma petahu Kuma petahu Beautiful Shal asher nizgar Shal asher nizgar Kuma petahu Kuma petahu Utsvi asher barah Utsvi asher barah Elai shelahu the whole melody. That's it. Okay? So let's sing together. And then at some point, after this, the, the second stanza, we're going to change the, the rhythm. Let, after the second stanza, let's stop. Dan and Tali will do a little uh, solo, and then we'll, okay. we'll continue together. Okay? Shal asher nizgar kuma petahu utsvi asher barah elai shelahu leyom bohadai lalim tevel shakai shamre hahatu alai tevihu. Shah Rashid Nis 
as many other poets, when they use the theme of Shira Shirin, they also include in here, in the poem itself, a dialogue. There are two voices in here. So let's look at it for a moment. Shar Hashem Nizgar, the gate long shut, Kuma Petacheu, get up and throw it wide. Utsvi Asher Barach, and the stag long fled, Elai Shelacheu, send him to my side. So this is one of the lovers speaking, right? Now we're going to find out which one it is. It says, "Leyom boachadai." When one day you come, lalin beden shadai, to lie between my breasts. Now, okay, sham lechachar tov, alayt enicheus. That day, your scent, your aroma, will cling to me like wine. That's the it's a little bit of a free translation, but it's very beautiful. So when one day you come to lie between my breasts, the Midrash says, Ben Shaddai Yalin, you come to, to lean between, to lie between my breasts. Midrash says, Zoha Shechina. Zoha Shechina. Shaita Netuna Ben Shnei Akruim. This is the Shechina that used to lie between the two the two cherubim that were where on top of on top of the ark there were two cherubim that's where the presence of God resided so the Midrash says the Shekhinah is to reside in that place so when you come back now we're in Galut now we're in exile now the door is closed now we're not in the same loving contact as we were before now you're not home basically right we're not in a place of togetherness we're not in a place of home when you come back, you will lie again between my breasts, says the female in this, the female lover. Who is the female lover? Israel. Israel, of course, to God. Now, now there comes the second voice here. How shall I know his face, or her face, or lovely bride? The lover you're asking me to send. It's a, the translation is a little free. Kitomri elai, when you say to me, shelach shilcha vekachehu, when you say to me, send him and take him back. So, 
this is the voice of the male lover speaking. What does your what does your beloved look like? It's of course playing on the Shira Shirin that says Mado Def Midot. So for you those of you who know the text, Mado Def Midot, the Penot Yerushalayim, the Torahs of Yerushalayim, ask the lover, Mado Def Midot, what what's what what's your how would we translate? What's so special about your lover? How would we how can we tell who is your lover? So here you have the voice of God. What does your lover look like? Oh, beautiful drawing. Okay. And then the voice of the female returns at the end. She responds. Who is my lover? That one who is beautiful. Who is red. And talking, of course, about David Amelech. This is the way that David Amelech is identified for the first time when he's a a young a shepherd, that this is the way he's identified to the prophet Shmuel. Okay? Kuma Meshachehu is the words of God to Shmuel and Abi, to Shmuel saying, take this David and anoint him, he will be the king. So you see how many strands they bring into this poem. He brings from Shirashirim, he brings from the book of Shmuel. Yes. I was thinking that actually, as you said, the last stanza is about David, I, and, but the, 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 the woman, us, is talking to, I presume, to God, and we're asking God to send Tzvi Hashem Barach. Mashiach. It's Mashiach, actually. Exactly. It's about the Messiah, and David at the exactly. end is the prototype of... Yeah. Exactly. So there are many strands yeah. in here. There's Shira Shirim, there's relationship between God and the people of Israel between the two lovers on the, on the plain level, in the, in the mystical or, or spiritual level between God and the Jewish people. There's also here the Tzvi Asher Barach, the stag that fled, that is brought at the end, is David, is the Mashiach. You know, so there are many, many uh, ideas that are expressed in this short, you know, really short poem. So let's move into another... Uh, <coughs> into another poem of Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gavirol called Shohan Pasadeh. Shohan Pasadeh, it's also taken from a, from the, from a prophecy. Shohan Pasadeh is the prophet Micah. And Shohan Pasadeh means that the people of Israel are in the Sadeh, are in the field. They are in exile. The Sadeh, here the field, represents exile. So you are in exile, Imoale Kushan, you are among the tents of Kushan. Kushan is Midian. It could also be taken as to be the Arab nations, okay? Because now Shlomo ibn Gabirol is all the way in Spain, living among Muslims who are fighting with Christians, basically. That's what's going on in Spain at the time. So he's living among Muslims and among Christians who are fighting with each other. And, uh, uh, and and the people of Israel is out in exile in the midst of the Arabs and the Christians, the Muslims and the Christians. And, uh, and here, uh, Israel is called to come and see the beauty of the land, or maybe Israel is calling God to come and see the beauty of the land, where together Israel and God will re reconstitute their home as it once was before the exile, before the troubles, before the destruction, before the wars. They're going to restore their relationship in their original home, which he said it's a slave. And there they're going to reconstitute their relationship of love. And now, but now, they're looking for each other. Okay? And so they're, they're trying to bring each other to, to that place of, of desire. I mean, this poem is about, about calling, uh, it's about yearning and about uh, awakening uh, each other's desire for the other, okay? So you'll see there's also two voices here, okay? The first four uh, stanzas uh, are one voice and the last, the second half of the poem is another voice. Try to figure out who is who, okay? This is a melody of, uh, sung by the Jews of Afghanistan, which are a branch 
of the Jews of Iran that ended up in Afghanistan, but they developed their own musical tradition, and uh, uh, and this is what it sounds like. How many of you 
have learned today for the first time a Jewish song from Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very rich tradition here. So did you see the two, the two parts of this poem? Who says Shohan Pasadeh or Moalei Kushan? Who says that? <coughs> God says, Shohan Pasadei Molay Kushan, in Dil Berlosh Carmel, come back and look at Eretz Israel, Tzafili Arbashan, look, look at the beauty of Eretz Israel, Lagan Asher Nechmas, the garden that was destroyed, Kala Seyi Einech, look at this garden that was destroyed, Uriya Gugatech, and look at your bed of flowers, Kinim Leash Hashan, that is full of roses. Beautiful, no? And now, Malach Yifei So God says to Israel the first four lines, and now the last is Israel speaks to God. Malach Yifei Kitazo Gani. Why did you abandon my garden? Lirot began Yokshan, Tachat Atzedishan, to be roaming among other nations, among other people. Dishan is Seir, it's Edom, it's the Christians. Avar Edalagan, come down into the garden. Tochal Meganim Shaman, eat delicious food. Uvchek Yifatayin, Tishkam Begam Tishan. And within the embrace, in the bosom of your beloved, Tishkam Begam Tishan. Come, rest, and go to sleep. So it's really a beautiful Yifatayin here. Israel speaking about itself, saying to God, come, come back to me. I'm the beautiful one, and come and rest with me. Yes? So one of the Israeli singers, I want to say, kind of motion, did a modern, more modern version of the words. Uh-huh. That melody, it was entered into, into the International Song Festival a number of years ago, and it won second or third prize, really? um, this melody. And the value song dance festival because on in Israel there was an adaptation of a dance that was made to this melody with that, those those set of words. So with this melody or a different melody? This, this, this melody very melody that we're doing. Uh, but it was a more modern adaptation. I see. So okay. it's really fun to actually know where the original Right. Wonderful. I should mention that um, I mean, we don't really know uh, uh, really the original of any of this, right? But um, the, the recording that we have now of Afghani Jews singing this, um, they're doing it with instruments from India, you know, with, uh, with harmonia and uh, Indian percussion and sitars. So it's a, a whole other sound. So we're, we're doing what we're doing with our instruments, but it's really an amazing cultural thing. Now you should know that these um, these putin, these poems, uh, are also used uh, liturgically. Uh, they're used liturgically. For example, Shara Shavnisgar, the first one that we that we learned. Um, if you know that uh, there are two traditions of Jews who get up in the middle of the night on Friday night to Shabbat morning to to sing. They're called bakashot. They sing petitionary poems that are about restoration of, uh, of, of the Jewish people from the exile, of the, the end of the exile, of the coming of redemption. And uh, they sing all night. This is a tradition going back all the way back to Spain. Uh, where they used to get up in the middle of the night. They used to not only study Torah, but also to, to sing these, these poems of, uh, of yearning, of longing, of restoration, and so on, of redemption, particularly in the midst of the night. And the night symbolizes, of course, also exile, okay, the place of darkness. And in the dark and in the silence of the night, they used to sing these songs. Now, Moroccan Jews have a tradition of bakashot, they have a collections, col many, many, many poems that are uh, divided according to the different Shabbatot of the year. On each Shabbat of the year, it's only the, actually during the winter months, they sing as certain selections of poems. 
on Shabbat Bereshit, certain poems, on Shabbat Noah, certain poems, and so on and so forth. This poem is part of the Bakashot of the Moroccan tradition. The Syrians Jews, now joined by Iraqi Jews, Egyptian Jews, Lebanese Jews, Turkish Jews, sometimes also Iranian Jews, they gather together to sing a different set of poems. That is a fixed set of poems. There are 66 poems in the collection of Bakashot of the Syrian Jews, now called the Yerushalmi tradition. So there's the Moroccan and there's the Yerushalmi. There are different collections. This poem is part of the Moroccan collection. The Jews of Iraq sing this poem in Oshana Rabbah. On the night of Oshana Rabbah, there's a tikkun, there's a, a study all night. And in Oshana Rabbah, they sing this poem, Shara Shemizgar. Now, think about it. Why Shara Shemizgar? Kuma Petacheu on the night of Oshana Rabbah. Think Yom Kippur. Where do we end on Yom Kippur? Tachlanushar. Right? Neilat Shearim. The last service of Yom Kippur, of the five services of Yom Kippur, the last service is called Neila. Neila Shearim. The closing of the gates of the temple, the closing of the gates of prayer. Right? And we say to God before the doors are shut, Tachlanushar. Don't close yet. Kifanayom. The day is about to end. But don't close the door. We want to still. We want to still do tshuva, we want to still pray, we want to put our request before you. But then, eventually, the doors close. And then comes Sukkot, and then comes Oshana Rabbah. And Oshana Rabbah is the last opportunity to actually, uh, to actually uh, do tshuva and to put in our requests before the door finally, finally shuts. So here's Shara Shem Nizgal, the door that closed on Yom Kippur, Open it now for Roshanah Rabbah, for one last opportunity for us to say Roshanot and for us to put our request for a, for a new year, for a better year, and so on and so forth, for life. Okay? So it makes sense, right? So, Shochan Pasadeh, this poem we just sang, is also part of the Bakashot of Moroccan Jews sang on certain Shabbatot. And the Jews of Babylonia, of Iraq, they sing it on Sukkot. Because probably Shukhan Pasadeh, the concept of Sadeh, the concept of, uh, I mean, there's flowers here and, and so on. I, I don't know why uh, this poem uh, was chosen for Sukkot, but it's a poem for Sukkot. And the next poem we're going to look at is Yala Yala. We're moving five centuries forward in time. We're, we're one of the greatest poems, the poets most prolific poets of Israel, Najara, uh, of uh, Tzfat, of the Eretz Israel, of the 16th century, part of a whole group of mystical uh, uh, teachers and poets, um, a, an incredible creative spirit of Israel, Najara, is known to have gone out uh, very frequently to the taverns and the bars and hang out with the people. And here there are melodies, there are popular melodies. And many of them were these were local Arab type of melodies. And he would listen to the melodies, he would fall in love with these melodies, and then he would compose poems that would uh, be based on the melodies he heard. And that were very beloved to the people, also to Jews who lived in that area. So he composed many, many beautiful poems. This. Um, um, poem Ya'ala Ya'ala is sang in the Sephardic tradition sometimes when a girl is born for a type of Simchat Bat or for, or for a Bat Mitzvah. It's a celebration of a, of a young woman or a girl or a young woman. Okay? It's also by the Moroccan Jews, it's sung in Shabbat Bo, in the Bakashot of Shabbat Bo. And of course, what he said about uh, Najala taking melodies of the region, um, there were people who did not appreciate that he was doing it. Apparently, other Kabbalists that were sitting at the table of the Ari um, did not like uh, Al Jala, and this was one of the reasons they gave. And also, apparently, he would roll up his sleeves or something, something he hasn't accepted. And so they would complain to the Ari, and the Ari said, "When he sits at the table and starts to sing, the angels uh, join us here. So don't complain." <laughs> yes.
there were people who were trying to stain his reputation, and they wrote very, very uh, disparaging things about Rabbi Israel Najjar. It's found in the sources. Okay, Yala Yala Boy Legani. Yala is a is a deer, a doe. Yala Boy Legani, a female deer. Do, a deer, a female deer. Yala Yala Boy Legani, come to my garden. Okay, this is the next Rimon, Gam Pachka Gafni, it's taken paraphrasing Shira Shiri. Okay, um, and this is, um, there are many, many melodies here. I don't know what that wants to do. Okay, this is a very popular melody. Let's sing a more simple song. Yeah. This is a very soft melody, Moroccan melody. Um, I find it very beautiful because it allows you to take in the text and to savor it. Many of the melodies are more uh, exciting, but they go quickly through the text. They don't really have enough time to take it in. Okay. Depends which party. So depends which party. <laughs> <laughs> depends which occasion. Exactly. Uh, David says it depends. It depends on the occasion. You know what? You choose the melody according to the occasion. And this is also a dialogue, and you can see because I, we put it in, uh, we put italics in the alternative voice. Okay, so the, there's voice one and voice two. So try to figure out who is who.
spirituality, right? This is more pleading, right? It's a, I mean, there, we'll teach you another, we'll show you another melody. This is a very pleading melody. It's very, there's something, uh, there's a, I, I feel, I, I feel a great deal of yearning here. A great deal of passion and pathos and yearning. Okay? It's like a cry. And now, so this Yavodo Diyachish Tzadav is Israel speaking. And now, Shuvi Eli, Ad Batahuva, is God speaking to Israel, saying, Shuvi Eli, you come, you return first, Vani Ashuva. Right? What do we say in Megillat Echa? At the end of Megillat Echa, the last verse is, Ashivenu Adonai Elecha Ben Ashuva. Right? Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. Ashivenu Adonai Elecha. You return us to you and we will return. So God says, you return to me first and then I will return. Okay, so there is a, there is sometimes, right, in, in relationships between lovers, husband and wife, partners, friends, no, 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 you start, you initiate, then I'll come. No, 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 you initiate, okay? You say I'm sorry first and then I'll say I'm sorry. You show your, you show your desire to be in the relationship. Give a sign that you really care for me, and then I'll show you that I care for you. So there's this, this positioning and display in a very beautiful way here, okay? Okay, so let's continue. Let's do a couple more lines. Shubi Elai, we're going to change a little bit the form. We're going to keep the form that we taught you for Yala Yala. We're going to be a little freer for the verses. Okay? Show me. Yeah. 
So which one do you like best? The last one. Depends, depends, right? When? Okay. So let's move to Ayelet Fen. We're jumping now to the 17th century in, um, in Taiman, in Yemen. So many of these places have no longer any Jews, Afghanistan, Taiman. Uh, but uh, Jews carried from them, from there, very rich traditions. Rabbi Shalom Shabazi, one of, was one of the greatest poems, poets and scholars of Teiman, and he composed this uh, poem called Ayelet Hen Bagalut Ismecheni. It became very popular by uh, Israeli singers of, the, of uh, Yemenite origin, of Rahaza and so on, and they're very well known in Israel. And they sing, they, they, this, this is a song for Khatunot, for weddings. They're sung till this day, very often at the, at the wedding celebration. Ayelet Hen is, uh, is uh, from the book of Proverbs. It says, Ayelet Tahavim Ve'ya'alat Hen. Okay, and uh, this here is a name, Ayelet Hen, for the Shekinah, for the presence of God, the female aspect of God. Ayelet Hen, Bagalut Tismecheni, in exile, in exile, support me. Uvalayla, betoch heka meloni, and in the night, in the darkness, in despair, you know, whatever. Laila also is a place of, uh, of fear. A place of the lack of faith, okay? Laila is all these things, is the exile and all these other things. And in that place of Laila, Betocheka in her bosom, Meloni, do I rest? Is my place where I spend the night, basically. I, I rest in that place. It's my residence. She will lodge me. That's the translation here. Okay? We'll teach you the melody. It's very beautiful. And uh, the second stanza. Of course, the theme of yain, I don't know that it, the theme of wine, I don't know that it appeared before in any of the poems, but yain is very prominent in Shira Shirin, okay, as an element of celebration, of intoxication, of course, intoxication of, uh, of the physical intoxication which, which uh, mimics or parallel, parallels the emotional intoxication of love, of course, of, of reverie, of... of uh, of, uh, of excitement. And so here is Lekosina Anita Mid Mezuman. For her, a glass of wine, and we're going to have four cups of wine uh, in, in about 10 days, right? Or eight days, nine days. So four cups of wine. Lekosina Anita Mid Mezuman. I'm always ready for her, uh, for her wine, for her glass of wine. Venitarav Hamat Yena Beyeni. And our wines, the, 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 the sweetness of our wines mix my wine and her wine mix together. We know what we do in Sheva Brachot, right? Sheva Brachot and the celebration of Sheva Brachot for a, for a bride and a groom during the week of their, their wedding we say seven blessings over a cup of wine and, I'm sorry, six blessings over one cup of wine and one blessing over a second cup of wine and then we mix them together and the bride and the groom drink from the mixing together of all these blessings, okay? So here is some of that, maybe reference to that tradition. But the commentators, of course, who want to read this in some way that is, uh, they don't want people to get drunk. They want people to get drunk with Torah, not to, drink, to get drunk with wine. They say, Lechosiena, it's interpreted to be, Lechosiena, ni tamid mezuma, is limut Torah. Okay, yain. Is also a symbol of Limut Torah. So the Kosiena Anita Mid Mezuman means I'm always ready for learning Torah. Okay? <laughs> so always ready to come to Trisha to learn Torah. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom that we should get drunk. <laughs> or intoxicants. We should get drunk on Torah. Okay? <laughs> but of course the book of Shirashim says Shetu Veshikhrudodin. 
which is picked up here, של תנו דודים לאומתי ושחרור, אוקיי? We love it once, drink and be happy, אוקיי? So let's, איילת uh, חן. section of Morocco known as Tefilalt, in the mountains. And this 
place gave birth to, uh, or is the place of a family, the residence of a family that had great impact on Moroccan Jewry and then in Israeli Jewry. Rabbi Yaakov Abu Khatsira was one of the greatest scholars of the 19th century in Morocco. His descendant is known as the Baba Sali. He lived in Israel. He's revered as a saint among Moroccan Jews, the Baba Sali. And uh, his brother is this Rabbi David Abu Khatsira. And he composed this acrostic in his name that is about the giving of the Aseret Adibro, the Ten Commandments. This is a poem about Matan Torah. And you can see, you will see how the theme here is woven. Oh, many of the other poems were about Galut, were about the exile, were about the yearning between God and the Jewish people in the night of the exile. And here is a poem that brings Shira Shirim at a different moment. At a moment of encounter, Nar Sinai, which is also a moment of love. Uh, in the Midrash, is a moment of marriage between God and the Jewish people. What's the ketubah of that marriage? The Torah. The Torah is the ketubah of the marriage between God and the Jewish people in Nar Sinai. So you can see in this poem, you will see that it brings each one of the Ten Commandments. Okay? So if you count the letters or the name David, Abi Chatzira, you will find that, except for the last verse, which is a, the signature, the, we call the Chazak, many poems signed with the word Chazak, and the opening, Adonai Eloheinu, the rest is ten verses, and each one of them is dedicated to a different uh, one of the, uh, actually, uh, each one, you'll, you'll see, as we sing it, we'll see, okay? So, No, it begins with Uve Yom Shabbat. It begins there. Okay, so we'll we'll sing it from the yeah. We'll we'll sing it for you and then we'll teach it to you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, just a couple of words about the poem so you get a little bit more enjoyment as we sing it and we teach it to you. Every one of the verses of the stanzas has a quote, brings one of the, beginning with the third one, with one of the Ten Commandments, it brings an additional verse from the Tanakh, a quote or a reference to an additional verse from the Tanakh, and all of them end with the word tov, okay? With the word good. Because this moment of the encounter of Sinai was a moment that was good. It references back to the story of creation. Each one of the days of creation was good. Mayar Elohim Kitov, God said, so that it was good. And the moment of Sinai is a moment of recreation of the world. Now, a new world, because it has Torah in it. And because there's this encounter between the Noten Torah, God who gives the Torah, and the Mechabel Torah, and the Jewish people that is there to receive the Torah. And together, they begin a new story for the world, a new opportunity for the world, for a world with Torah that can succeed before there was a world with Torah that uh, did, did, not, did not do quite well. But once the world has Torah in it, there's a possibility, there's the hope that we can do better and that redemption will come. So that's why it's everything ends with the word talk. So let's teach you the melody. There's a call, okay? Uh, so, and you can see here, your Dodi Yarad Legano is a quote from Shira Shirin, okay? And it's a very beautiful, you know, this notion that God came down on Mount Sinai, came down to his garden. The garden is the world, you know? And there he encountered the beloved, the beloved of the Jewish people. Okay, so it begins, Todi Yaradli Gano, everybody repeats, and then we'll sing together the rest of the verse. So here's how it goes. The call is, Todi Yaradli Gano, Todi Yaradli Gano, Uchekara Kideshano, 
במצוות אל תיבנו, שומרם עשתו. כן. דודי על גנו, דודי על גנו, ובקלתי בשנו, במצוות אל תיבנו, שומרם Okay, so let's begin from Adonai Loheinu. It's very, it's basically three notes. Basically. There's a little, so a little of that, but this is what's called pentatonic scale. This is the, everything you hear from Africa, also from the Far East, but this is from Morocco. This melody is used for various few themes. among Moroccan Jews, and um, they also use it for this poem, and um, so this is one, one case where we didn't have this so far in the rest of the songs, but we have a, a melody and a poem that come from the same place, and the, the rootsiness of it is very, is very powerful, actually. Okay, so here. Adonai Eloheinu Thank you. 
So he complains to God, God, it's actually playing off a verse in the story of Judah and Tamar, where Judah ends up sleeping with Tamar, not knowing it's his daughter-in-law, and then he finds out that she's pregnant, and he wants to have her killed, to burn her. And before she's being taken out to be killed, she sends him the things he had given her as a pledge. And she says, do you recognize the, these things? To whom is the seal, he'd given her a seal, which means literally cords. We have an expression cords, it means, it means clothing. He gives her a piece of clothing, which is his. She says, do you recognize these things? So Yehuda Levi takes this story and he transposes it to Israel. We turn to God and say, he, 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 referencing to the idea of, of, of circumcision. Petilim is the, is the, is the tawit. In other words, who has the inner side and who has the outer side? Who represents you in this word, in this world? If so, why, why are we suffering? He complains. Allow us to sing a new song. 
And it ends actually with a hope for the future. The hope is that someday our sun will shine. The nasu hatzlalim, the shadows will, will depart, also from Shira Shiri. Hajiyafua Hayom, the nasu hatzlalim. So I just teach this very simple tune. It goes like this. Yom Riyabo Hashan Nevchu Mitzurim, Shira Hadasha Shibchu Giyurim.